Good morning, how are you today? Well, it's uh, beautiful out, it's cold, it's in the 40s, I'm out in the morning. I don't have any uh, official business, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not wearing jacket and tie. I, I have to do a lot of writing today. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, Rogue Rudy's in the news again, for a deposition he gave back in August. And basically what he said was, uh, this is the libel action that he's involved in, that he went out there and he made these statements, basically slander statements, uh, attacking the voting machine companies uh, for being fixed. And when asked at the deposition what was his information, he said, oh, somebody told him. And, you know, I don't have time to check these things. I didn't check these facts. I just went out and I, I said them. Now, in the slander case, reckless disregard of the truth is one of the standards. And plainly, if you're not checking your facts, <laughs> that's pretty reckless, especially when you're making such strong statements about such large companies and such large audiences that affect their business model, if you will. And that's why they've sued him for a fortune. Now, some people have asked, uh, well, will it affect other cases and the slander cases? And the answer is, well, one obvious one, it seems to me, is his uh, disbarment in New York. Because the challenge there is he made statements to courts uh, and he, while he had a New York bar license and courts other than in New York, uh, t saying things that weren't true. Well, this fits right into that because here he is admitting, I don't check the facts. I just go out and I say these things. So I, th I think that's going to bring him a cropper. Now on the Hill, we have uh, the ongoing struggle with the uh, spending bill. And here's the question. The headline of the Post today said, Congress is sprinting toward considering the spending bill. Sprinting? Are you kidding me? This has been a marathon. We've been doing this since, what, May, uh, June? Uh, it's not a marathon. It's not anything. It's certainly not a sprint. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I, I want to hear it when they actually pass the bill. And there are modifications I read in the bill right now that seems to me are antagonistic to the moderate wing. In other words, you're pushing through things that you want, that you can get through in the House, but that will act as a barrier in the Senate, where we have the S&M gang, we have uh, Cinema and Mansion. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I think we should be passing a bill in the House in collaboration with the Senate that will pass in the Senate with S and M, or at least it'll give us in a position to put pressure on them to agree to it, and I'm not sure that's happening. So if they do pass the bill on the sprint today, it may be dead on arrival in the Senate because it hasn't taken account of the problems in the Senate. So uh, in the beginning, I forecast that this would never go anywhere. I really think there are marvelous things in this bill that would make a, a difference for the better. And I wish they'd do the triage that's necessary. Politics is the art of the possible. And there are some people in this fight that uh, don't care that they're going to make the bill impossible because it's going to be a barrier. It's going to stick in the craw of the neck of the people who uh, are supportive of the bill. The, uh, the other gripe I guess I have, which is longstanding, and I'm sure you share it, are these people that will not take the... Uh, the vaccine. It's just not acceptable. It's a combination of, of stupid and political, and it's about survival. It's about health. We should be mandating it. We should be punishing people that are taking up beds in hospitals because they won't take uh, the vaccine. There's a story in the Post today. There's a woman, Lisa Wilson, and she's been vaccinated. But in her family, in a period of a couple of weeks, they lost six people, all of whom refused to be vaccinated, disgusted and refused to be vaccinated. And now they're dead for no good reason at all. They could be alive. That family could be intact because of this stupid. I, I also think these politicians and different media, they're going around scaring people with ridiculous stories. I think it should be a crime. I mean, because we're endangering the health of people who lack the will to do their own investigation and to do what's necessary to preserve themselves and their own health. So that's, uh, now, some of you may follow the case Arbery. And Arbery is the case in which uh, three men 
went after a black jogger in a neighborhood. And uh, he was from the adjoining area. And the adjoining area was about 55% black, if I remember. And the area where he was jogging was about 28% black. And they chased him and harassed him, and finally they killed him. And now we're choosing a jury. But the way we're choosing the jury is to choose a discriminating jury, in my opinion, and not just mine, because there's only one black juror on the jury. Now, that means that we have a jury that reflects 8% of the black community when it's 27, 28%. So, you know, about three jurors should happen in a normal, impartial selection of jurors. Now, why isn't it happening? Because the defense is exercising uh, challenges to make it uh, a jury that is not balanced. So uh, they call them bats and challenges when you use peremptories to modify a jury to reflect, uh, well, your preference by way of race. So if you have more white jurors, you're more likely, uh, if there's bias and there's plenty of it, you're going to have an outcome of a certain type. So uh, that's it for today. I'm cold, it's chilly, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.